Luke chapter number 17. We'll begin reading in verse number 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They lift up, up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. It came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? And there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, and go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this day that has befallen us. And we thank you we get to come to your house tonight and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the reading of the word of God. We thank you for the privilege of having the scriptures. God, we are so thankful, Lord, to know you in the free pardon of sins. And God, we're glad you not only saved us from our sin, but God, you're a Savior that's even present in the midst of our storms. You promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And God, we're glad you hold us fast. And we bless your holy name. Well, we thank you for this good number on this Wednesday night. I pray that you'd bless each and every one tonight be able to sit in heavenly places. Father, we do pray for those that are sick. I pray for Brother Bob, and I pray for Christian. pray for those that are providentially hindered, that would desire to be here, but could not be here tonight. Lord, we certainly do pray that, Lord, you would bless even those that are watching via live stream. Now, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd draw our attention to you. I pray that the Word of God would burn in our hearts. And, Lord, I pray that it would transform us into your likeness. I pray that, Lord, you'd edify your people, encourage them, instruct them in righteousness. And I pray you'd enlighten our minds to truth, that, Lord, when we leave this place, we'd shine as lights before this dark and destitute world. Lord, thank you for all that you've done. And, Lord, we want to thank you in advance for what you will do. Lord, you do all things well. God, we're trusting in you to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Help us this night, glorify your name's sake, and use this unworthy vessel. And Father, we'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to several things as a way of introduction. This is a Thaddeus introduction. Uh, he moves on me all the time, but I saw him earlier on. There he is. Yeah, there he is. Uh-huh. Uh, you say, what is a Thaddeus introduction? It takes a long time to get through it, all right? But the good news is once we get to the message, we'll get through it rather quickly. But I want to look at these verses and, and understand what is really transpiring. I want you to notice, first of all, the course in verse number 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass as he, the Lord Jesus, went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And we know that the Lord Jesus, when he walked upon the earth, was our example. He is, uh, his life showed us how we should conduct our lives. And we find here that he is heading to Jerusalem, but he must go through Samaria and through Galilee to get there. A lot of times... Uh, uh, we go through things in our life, we don't understand what we're going through, and that's why we have the Scriptures. The Scriptures uh, are our absolute final authority, and they also instruct us uh, in ways of righteousness. Now notice, uh, he was going to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place of peace, and he's headed to mm, better pastures, greener pastures, uh, more restful pastures, a peaceful place, uh, but he has to go through Samaria and Galilee to get there. Well, if you study that out, Samaria is known as uh, a mountainous place. Sometimes you've got to climb a mountain to get to peace. Hmm? 
But also, he had to go through Galilee, and Galilee is a place of a circle or a place of a rotation, and sometimes it just feels like you're spinning your wheels, going around and around and around. Uh, and then you get through that, you got to go through a mountain. Uh, 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 but my dear friends, regardless of where we're going or what we're going through, we know where we're headed. We're headed to a place of rest. Uh, and I'm glad there is a peace that passes to understanding that even in the midst of the journeys that we have to take, the Lord does not forsake us. We see the course that He took, but then notice the cursed. In verse number 12, we find that as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. Now, in the scriptures, you know this if you're a student of the Bible, that leprosy is always a picture or a type of sin. There was no uh, 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 healing of leprosy. There was just a cleansing for it. And can I say that what a blessing, the day you got born again, your sins got washed away. Uh, but while you're in this old nature, this old man, this fleshly nature, you're still going to contend with sin. Being saved does not exempt you from sin, but I'm glad there is a cleansing for sin. And I'm glad for the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all sin. Uh, now, if you study out... Uh, uh, lepers, uh, they, they had a, a very distinct thing when they were diagnosed with leprosy they uh, were ostracized from their communities it was very contagious and sin is very contagious but they were ostracized and they could not uh, go back home they had to uh, 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 stay off in a community uh, of lepers uh, and if they happened to be in a, a town or a village uh, and they saw you coming down the road, they'd have to cross over the other side and cup their mouth and cry out they were unclean, they were unclean, uh, 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 to let you know to stay away from them uh, because of their highly, highly contagious disease. These men were cursed. They had a death sentence on them. We know for the wages of sin is death. And can I say they had a death sentence? They were cursed. But somebody had told them, if Jesus ever passes this way, he can help you in your condition. I mean, uh, why else would they cry out to Jesus uh, and cry out, Master? Uh, 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 why? Because somebody had told them. Maybe it's a blind man come by. Said, I once was blind, but now I see. How'd that happen, Jesus? Uh, maybe it's that woman with the issue of blood. Uh, and she's told him, hey, if Jesus ever comes by, uh, I don't know who told them. But somebody told them about Jesus. Uh, we see the course. We see the curse. Now notice their cry in verse 13. And they lift up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Aren't you glad he said that if any had come to him, he'd no wise cast them out? Hmm? Uh, they cried unto Jesus for mercy. And oh, what a Savior he is. Notice their cleansing in verse 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. Uh, can I say only Jesus can cleanse you? Jesus is the answer for every question, by the way. And he can help you tonight, friend. No matter what you're facing, Jesus can help you. We find not only the cleansing, notice the commending. Look at verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God and fell, on his face, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Notice his commending. He is worshiping the Lord. He is commending God for what God had done in his life. Uh, he's given back glory to God because God had done for him what no one else could do. And then notice the consulting or the Inquiry. Look in verse 17. And Jesus answering and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. He looks to his disciples and says, uh, What's going on here? Did we not cleanse ten? Where are the nine? There's only one that comes back. And he's a stranger, he's a Samaritan. Mm -mm. And then we see the comforting. 
verse 19. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Can I say he had no right to the things of Christ, yet Christ still healed him. Just like the woman at the well had no right or claim to Christ, but he was there waiting for her that day, and he changed her life because her faith was put in him. Now, several years ago, I preached a message on where are the nine. He cleansed ten, where are the nine? Uh, can I say, it's a frustrating thing when you see folks give their heart and life to Jesus and then after a while, they just get gone. Hmm. Can you imagine where we'd be if everybody that's come through here in the last 22 years was still here? We'd have built a long time ago. Hmm? Where are they at? Somebody once said that 90% of the work gets done by 10% of the people. Where are they all at? Well, here's the points to where are the nine. The one sitting at home with the family. And you can give that on, on any given church service. There's somebody sitting at home with the family. Can I say one's asleep in the garden? You remember the three inner circle disciples when he said, watch while I go to pray in the garden of Gethsemane? And they fell asleep in the garden. One's warming by the devil's fire. You remember Peter cussing him, warming by the devil's fire? Somebody's out there in sin tonight. And they should be in the house of God. Can I say one's in the hog pen? The prodigal son. Or somebody used to sit on the church pew. And they're in a hog pen tonight. Can I say, one's in the whale's belly. And God called them to do something. Instead of doing it, they went the wrong direction. God found a great fish for them out there in the world. Are you listening? One's underneath the juniper tree having a pity party. Woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. Can I say this? One's down in Sodom. I did read in Hebrews where Lot's called a righteous man, but he vexed his soul, and he lost his family. Mm -hmm. Down there in Sodom. Can I say one's deceived by false religion? Mm -hmm. Can I say what a terrible thing to be saved, to sit under fundamental Bible preaching, and tonight, well, most false religions and false churches don't have service on Wednesday night but come Lord's Day they'll be in a false church listening to a false gospel Jesus says where are the nine and can I say the last one is in the graveyard Paul said he turned some over for the destruction of the flesh that the soul might be saved some not only got out of the will of God, they got out of the will of God so bad that God could not bring them back to the center of his will, so they're in a graveyard tonight. Boy, I'd rather be the one than the nine. But I, I want to think about these ten lepers for a minute. We'll get to the message. Now, now think about this. Here are these lepers. And it's easy to throw off on the nine that didn't come back and give glory to Jesus. Very easy especially if you're a Baptist preacher, because that's all we do on Monday is sit and count the nine that wasn't here, huh? But can I say, I, I want to just kind of broaden our thinking a little bit tonight. Let's think about these nine. Brother Josh, I don't know anything about these nine lepers, but perhaps some of them have been uh, in this leper con uh, uh, colony or standing afar off, having this disease of leprosy for a long time. I mean a long time. They've got to the point, Brother Clint, where they think there is no hope. They've already resigned in their mind. Death is coming their way. They'll never see their family again, Miss Pam. They'll never get to go to synagogue and worship again. They'll never get to enjoy... Uh, uh, the fruitfulness of life anymore. Their whole plot, plot in life is to wait and die. 
And here comes Jesus. And in a moment, Fred, just in an instant, that death sentence turned to life. And now he says, go show yourselves to the priest. Uh, and Brother Ryan, all of a sudden, hey, I get to see my family again. Uh, I get to go to the house of God again. Uh, I get to have life again. Uh, I get to enjoy the fruits of my labor again. Uh, and they're so excited over the cleansing. They forget about the cleanser. Then I get to thinking about maybe some of these guys haven't had it that long, but they're looking around at those that have. And they see what their future is. Body part by body part becoming so infected and falling off. They see the, the point of death on some where they're just laying in a bed waiting to die. They realize too that Maybe they have young children. They're never going to see those children grow up. Uh, they're never going to see their wife anymore. They're never going to be able to provide for their family anymore, Brother Aaron. Uh, and uh, 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 all of this is new to them. And they're, they're wondering, uh, 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 how long before I get this bad? And then comes Jesus. And he cleanses them, tells them, go show yourself to the priest. And off they are. They're excited. They have life again. Uh, they get to go hug their youngins up again. Uh, uh, they get to see mama again. Uh, and they're so excited they didn't get to the point the other ones did. You ever been to a birthday party with a young child and they get all these gifts and they're not allowed to play with any of them? You ever see that? They, they, they open one and Boy, they're so excited, they can't wait to play with this. And, oh, no, you got to open this one. you got to read the card. They don't care about the card. The only thing they want in the card is open up and see green stuff falling out. They don't read the cards. They don't care about the card. But they want to play with this toy. And then they get another one. They can't play with that. Can't take it out of the box. Got to open another one. Got to open another one. Finally, they get one. They say, okay, you can play. And all of a sudden, all they got on their mind is that toy. And their mama says, oh, got to thank Aunt Mabel for getting you the toy. Mm. So then they got to go give Aunt Mabel a hug and thank her. All they want to do is play with the toy. Can I say, the nine had their mind on the toy rather than giving thanks to Jesus. Can I say, we get that way. God blesses us every day. God meets our needs every day. He takes care of us every day. I read something today. It said, uh, 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 make sure you, th you, you talk to Jesus today. Make sure you pray to Jesus to, and talk with Him today because He did wake you up. Uh, he wakes us up every day, and a lot of times we don't think about that too much. Uh, we don't think about having the strength when we put our feet on the floor to stand up uh, and to go on uh, uh, throughout our day. We don't think about uh, all He's provided for us. Yeah, it's easy to complain about gas prices, but He has provided uh, uh, so we can put gas in our vehicles and go where we need to go. Uh, uh, he's been good to us. Uh, and how much do we really, really fall at His feet and thank Him for being so good to us? I want to focus on the one that came back tonight. This, this is what I want to preach on. Just give you this little thought. I want to preach on this is what Jesus means to me. This is what Jesus means to me. If there's any one of the ten that really had an excuse not to come back to Jesus, it's the Samaritan. But he's the one that did. You know what the Bible says? That he who God forgiveth much, loveth him much, are you listening? You know who are the best Christians? That crowd that used to be the worst sinner. That one that hadn't got over what garbage dump Jesus came by to get them out of it. Huh? 
Hey, uh, uh, folks that are saved uh, uh, from a church pew that was raised on a church pew uh, uh, that didn't come out of a drunkard's home, uh, 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 they know what it is to sing the hymns and they know what it is to come to Sunday school uh, and they know what it is to come to church and hear preaching. Uh, they love Jesus uh, and they're thankful God saved them. Uh, but it's something about that wretched sinner, uh, that one uh, uh, that was in the gutter of life uh, and Jesus came by their way uh, picked them up out of that pit, uh, put them on the solid rock. Uh, they have no problem uh, falling at the feet of Jesus because they knew what they were before he came by. The Samaritan came back. And really what he's saying, he's saying this is what Jesus means to me. Now there's something about the one who returned. Can I say first of all, he truly, without a shadow of a doubt, trusted Christ. Look again in verse 14. The Bible says that when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. He truly trusted Christ. Christ said, Go show yourself to the priest. This fellow's a Samaritan. Last place you want to see him is at a Jewish synagogue. Uh, but Jesus said, Go, and he went. Uh, he trusted in Christ. Uh, what a blessing for folks uh, when they hear the voice of God, when the Word of God says, uh, 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 go, and they go. Or when the Word of God says, stand, and they stand. Uh, when the Word of God says, shout, and they shout. Uh, when the Word of God says, humble yourselves, they humble themselves. Uh, hey, listen, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Uh, uh, the secret to this whole thing uh, is the minding God. When God says it, uh, that settles it. Uh, just start doing Doing it uh, and you'll be blessed, blessed, blessed uh, because you do what God said to do. Huh? I'd like to have a dollar for every Christian I've known the last 48 years that thinks they have to reason it out and figure it out and try and uh, uh, factor it out uh, and even doubt it out to see what God says. When God said it, just do it, my dear friend. Uh, that's what this fellow did. He just trusted Christ. Huh? You ever notice, little children, does not the Bible teach us to have a childlike faith? Uh, you ever notice children believe everything? Uh, you can go up to one like this right here and say, whoop, got your nose. They ain't got enough sense to go, no, you don't, still there. They say, that's my nose. Uh, now fight you to get their nose back. Those kids believe everything. Uh, they believe everything. Well, how come we don't believe God on everything? Mm. Seems like the older we get, the more cynical we get. No, just believe him. Huh? By the way, he's pinned it down for us so we can grasp it. Just believe him. And yet, so many are looking for loopholes. Just take what he said and live by it. That boy just trusted Christ. He didn't know anything else to do. I mean, he's in a mess. He's got leprosy. Hmm? He's noticed them, them, them Jew boys got excited when Jesus came by. And Jesus told him what to do. And he really believed it. Hmm? You can always tell when you're around somebody that really believed the Bible. That really believed that Jesus meant what he said. Hmm? That's my crowd. Huh? The one who returned truly just trusted Christ. Can I say this? The one who returned, turned to Christ. That's what he did. Look what it says. Look at verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. The other ones went to the house. We don't have any confirmation from the Scriptures. They ain't made it to the priest. You see, as the custom was, in order to be able to go back to your life, you had to have the sanction of a priest who would examine you and make certain that your leprosy uh, had been cleansed. Uh, now that sounds like that's not a big deal, uh, but it's not like going to the doctor and giving them 75 bucks for your copay uh, and 10 minutes you're on your way because that's about all they spend with you. No, you had to be put up for 14 days uh, and they examined you every day to make sure that that leprosy didn't come back. This fellow's headed to the priest. He gets to looking. It's gone. And 
And what's the first thing he did? He turned back to Jesus. Is that not a picture of repentance? A complete turn from the direction you were headed to Jesus? This fellow realized that Jesus had done something in him and he turned to Jesus. I, I, I have a real problem with folks that say they got born again, but they turn to everybody else. If you truly get born again, you'll be seeking Jesus. You'll be turning to Jesus. You'll want to hang around where Jesus is because he's the one that changed your life. This fellow, he said, this is what Jesus means to me. He means more to me than my family. He means more to me than my lifestyle. He means more to me than anything else. I'll just go back and hang out with him for a little bit. Uh, we find that he trusted Christ and he turned to Christ. Acts eleven twenty one 21 says, And when they heard, they believed and turned to the Lord. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll turn to the Lord. We see, trusted Christ... He turned to Christ. But then notice something else. The man who returned thundered praise toward Christ. Look what the Bible says. Look again in verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a nice little soft little voice. No. With a loud voice, glorified God. Huh? He got a case of the can't help it. He had a death sentence on his life, but now he has life. He was hideous, but now he's cleansed. And if it's like in Naaman's life, Naaman, when he got cleansed of leprosy, his flesh came back as a newborn babe. He's in better shape now than he was uh, before he ever got sick. Can I say, if you're saved by the good grace of God, you're in better shape now than you ever was even before you knew you was lost. Because God just does it that way. You became a new creature in Christ. We find that when he started grasping what had happened. Now listen, I didn't know a whole lot when I got saved. All I knew is something was different. I, I, I didn't know all that I know now and I don't know much now but I know a whole lot more now than I did then but can I say I didn't realize brother brother Phil uh, all I knew is I got saved and was going to heaven I didn't realize that I had escaped hell I didn't realize that I had a friend that stayed closer than a brother uh, I didn't realize uh, uh, that his promises were true uh, and that he'd never leave me nor forsake me uh, I didn't realize uh, how much he would bless me and how good he'd be for me uh, I didn't realize uh, uh, how he'd put a hedge about me I didn't understand all of that then uh, all I knew is that something had changed uh, and brother Ray when it got a hold this old boy uh, as he turned back to Jesus said something had changed in his life uh, he couldn't hold it back uh, he started glorifying God and praising God uh, he's telling all those other Samaritans in that town uh, he's the Christ uh, he's the Christ uh, he's the one worthy of our worship uh, we see he just thundered it out I like it when he gets so big on the inside of you you can't keep him in because that's what happened he thundered praise towards Christ. Uh, this is what Jesus means to me. So let that other nine go where they want to. I'm going to hang out here with Jesus. Yeah, I thought about this. The one that returned after he trusted Christ and turned to Christ and thundered praise towards Christ, he had a humble temperament before Christ. Look at verse 16. and fell down on his face at his feet. What a humble temperament. Nobody had to force him. Nobody had to bribe him. It was a natural reaction when he got to where Jesus was to fall down before him. I got a real problem with folks that say when they get to heaven they can't wait to go throw their arms around the Lord. Three instances we find in the scriptures where men saw the glorified Christ. And in all three accounts, they fell before him as if they were dead men. But can I say that 
Jesus as the Son of Man here in, in His flesh, just Jesus walking among men, He still was so much God that this fellow fell before Him. When Jesus really changes your life and you come to that cognizant thought, it is no problem bowing before Him. Matter of fact, it's a privilege to humble yourself before Him because you realize how He changed your life. Hmm. I worry about folks that say they're saved, but you never, ever see them prostrate before God. Hmm. I understand you may have a prayer closet, and that's where you get prostrate before Him. I understand that you may have a quiet place or a private place, that's where you get prostrate before Him. But neighbor, when we get to heaven... We're all going to get prostrate before him. We're all going to shout with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. So I'm just kind of the opinion, I want to get practiced up here so I'm in tune when I get there. Are you listening? Uh, one of the greatest privileges of the New Testament Christian, outside of being saved, outside of leading somebody else to Christ, is bowing before God and worshiping him. Because he's worthy of it. Altar prayer is a wonderful, wonderful thing for the child of God. Can I say some of the best times I've had in my Christian life is being the Lord on an altar somewhere. So I, I, I worry about folks they never seem to ever bow before the Lord. Uh, and I'm not talking about if you've got knee issues or back issues or physical health issues. The Lord understands all that telling you there's some folks it's a pride issue hmm? if there's one thing we can learn about this one that did return is he didn't have any pride that other nine we can speculate on them this fellow didn't then I thought about this the one who returned after he had that humble temperament towards God he bowed down before him notice he thanked Christ Look what it says in verse 16. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. Hmm. Can I say, we'll never thank him enough for saving our soul, let alone all the blessings that have come with it. I preached a message several years ago on what if God blessed you today with what you thanked him for yesterday. A lot of people be in trouble, Brother Donald, because they didn't thank him for much yesterday. They wouldn't have much today. And I say, a thankful Christian is a blessed Christian. They have the blessings of God on their life because God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble. He thanked Christ. He said, this is what Jesus means to me. I don't care if the whole world's watching I'm going to thank him for how good he's been to me. He changed my life. Hmm. On this Wednesday night, I know many of you have worked hard this week. Many of you have labored in this old sin-cursed world. But we had a good time on Monday night out knocking on doors. I wasn't feeling real good on Monday. My blood pressure was a little off. And I told Miss Ned I didn't feel good. Went out knocking on doors, and what a blessing to have Miss Sammy with you when you're out knocking on doors. She hit three doors to every one of mine, huh? You know, normally when Colton or or Caleb or Xander, one of these fellows goes out, and I like one of the kids being paired up with me. I like it. We normally have some good conversation. I couldn't keep up with Sammy long enough to even talk to her, man. She was just hitting them streets, huh? So, you can be my partner anytime, Sammy Joe, all right? I started calling her Sumatra. She said, where'd that come from? I said, I just made it up. Uh, about all the conversation we had. I mean, she was like the roadrunner. <laughs> she was gone, hitting them doors. Uh, what a blessing. But you know, Brother Aaron takes care of all of our multimedia. We had a wonderful email come through Monday night. What a real blessing. 
I called and chewed us out, said never come back to his house again because we need to be paying taxes and we need to be doing this and doing that and everything. I'm thinking, under God, all he's trying to do is keep him out of hell. By the way, as far as I know, everybody in here does pay their taxes. Unless you're a liar. Miss Billy knows she's one worse for the IRS. Huh? They better, she said. Huh? I don't know of anybody that's skating the IRS. How could I preach to Miss Billy every week if I was lying to her about my taxes? But what would cause somebody to be so nasty to send an email to a church and just being nasty? I'll tell you what it is. The devil's blinded the minds of this whole generation. You know, some students today at Yale University, anybody ever hear of that place? Pretty prominent. Huh? Students today, they've got, they've got a whole wall of men who have went to Yale University who have who gave their lives for the Constitution and the law of our land. Men that served on the Supreme Court, men that were great attorneys, men that pinned down parts of the Constitution, went to Yale. And these students had the audacity to deface this wall today and wrote on their we are the law. We've raised a generation that wants to absolutely make a mockery of everything this country's ever stood for. God, a law based on Judeo-Christian principles, and life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you are not far left like them, they think you and I stand in their way of being what they want to be. What they want to be? A bunch of spoiled brats that don't work for a living and give everything given to them. Hmm? Listen, America's in a mess. You know why America's in a mess? Because America stopped being thankful. And I say those that came to this country that were pilgrims came seeking God and being able to worship God without constraint. Those that went south of our border came seeking gold. That's why America's always been blessed. But America's been turned into a cesspool because America quit thanking God. And it's filtering into our churches. God help us to never, ever forget what he done for us. And God help us to always be quick to return to him and thank him and let the world know this is what Jesus means to me. He changed my life. He bettered my life. He saved my life. And I give all my allegiance to him my dear friends let me just ask you a simple question what does he mean to you when's the last time you thanked him when's the last time you fell at his feet and worshipped him when's the last time you let him know that you know that he changed your life and that you appreciate him greatly I, I can't speak for the nine only to say that in my travels and all the preaching I, I've been blessed to do, I've been, I've been blessed being some great churches. I really have. But in every church there seems to be a facet of folks that fall more in the nine than they do the one. We'd tear this world upside down if our churches would get back to being thankful and putting Jesus first. And if we'll put him first and be thankful, there's no limit to what he'll do for us and through us in the days that come ahead. So what does he mean to you? That'll be proven out in how you treat him.
God help us to allow him truly the lordship of our life. Let's all stand tonight. Mr. Renee, if you'll come. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. Maybe you just want to come and tell him you love him. Maybe you want to come and tell him thank you. Maybe tonight you don't know him. We'd love to introduce him to you if you'll come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. You can be saved. He can change your life like he did those lepers. He'll change your life tonight if you'll come and put your faith and trust in him. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We do thank you for how you've changed our lives. We thank you for loving us even when we were unlovable. Lord, we thank you for reaching way down the valley of sin where we were, saving us and changing us. God, we thank you for all your choice blessings. Lord, daily you loadeth us with benefits. Now, Father, I pray, Lord, we'd be quick to thank you and worship you and to let others know the hope that lieth within us and his name is Jesus now Father help your people many have flooded the altar bless them, help them God I pray for somebody here tonight not saved that God you'd save and change their life I pray for somebody saved but they've grown cold on God tonight would be the night of revival in their heart and in their life Father have your will and way now in this invitation Speak to hearts. And Lord, transform us to where, Lord, we'd show forth the goodness of God from this day forward. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.